guys, my name is Adam, your friendly Sasquatch, and today we are reviewing a new light from Nightcore for the year 2022. This light is called the MH40S, and it's intended for kind of a hunting or patrol or search and rescue application. Uh, the difference between a light like this and other lights is going to have a very long run time, and it's going to be a very throwy beam, meaning you can reach out and touch things a long ways away, versus a flooded beam that might light up your entire backyard or something like that. So um, we'll do some outdoor testing later in the video, but that's the intended audience for this particular light. Now there's a lot to go over. Let's go ahead and dive into what's included, and then we'll go over the functions of the light and then head outside for some testing. As for the box itself, it is really quite a nice box. It has a uh, magnetic lid on it. This pops open, and then you got different compartments for the different boxes and accessories that come with this light. So for anything that you're not using on a regular basis, you can just keep it in the box, or if you need to put the light away for long-term storage, you have a very nice box that'll work for long-term use. First thing included in the box is obviously the light itself, the wireless pressure switch, which we'll take a closer look at later in the review, two Picatinny rail mounts for mounting the wireless pressure switch to a rifle, some Velcro strips, along with an adhesive back Velcro pad. This is so you can mount the wireless pressure switch wherever you want. A USB-A to USB-C charging cable, as well as the brick you need to plug this light in. I really like that they include the power brick. Not a lot of lights are doing that these days. You also get this nice holster. The front is just a Velcro pouch. And it has the hole that passes all the way through to allow debris and uh, water and mud and stuff like that pass through. On the back, the belt loop does come undone, which is nice for sliding through your pack or on your belt, something like that. And then I will note that the uh, ring on the back here is made of steel, not plastic, which I've been seeing on more and more holsters these days. So nice heavy duty, a holster that comes with this particular light. And again, if you don't need it, you can just leave it in that nice box for long-term storage. A lanyard for those people that want it. Also included is this little O-ring, just in case you tear one of the O-rings on the light that come pre-installed. This is an extra. You don't need to install it unless you run into a problem with the light. And finally, the light does come pre-installed with two batteries, which total 10,000 milliamps, 5,000 milliamps each. They are NL2150 cell. 5,000 milliamp hours each, or 10,000 milliamp hours total for the light. Now charging with the charging cable and power brick provided, the light will charge in two hours and 45 minutes, which is pretty good for such a high capacity light. And finally, we have the obligatory user's manual and warranty card from Nightcore. Probably don't need the user's manual because you're watching this video and you'll learn everything you need to know about this light. Okay, so that's what you get in the box. Let's take a look at the actual light itself. The light is 10.08 inches long, 2.56 inches in diameter at the head, 1 inch in diameter on the body of the light, and the light itself weighs 8.67 ounces, which is actually really good. It feels like a quality, heavy-duty light, but it's not so heavy you feel like it's a brick in your pack or it's going to excessively weigh you down in whatever you're doing. So really good uh, balance between like build quality and weight. I think um, this light's going to serve a lot of people really well. Speaking of build quality, let's go ahead and review the features that you can't see on this particular light. The first is the IP68 rating, which means that this light is waterproof down to 1.5 meters for at least 30 minutes. The IP68 also means that this light is dustproof, meaning the switches and the tail switches and all that kind of stuff won't get gummed up and be affected by dirt and grime. So a uh, very good feature for a hunting slash you know, search and rescue type light. You definitely want that waterproofness. The light has been drop tested up to one meters, which is great. Um, that's easily, you know, dropping out of a vehicle or off a boat, something like that. Um, probably DA will take more than that, but it's been tested up to one meter. Now the front lens on this, we'll see if my camera will focus on it because of how long the slide is. It's a nice quality glass lens and a nice deep reflector, which is going to have a really long throwing beam on it. You also have a bit of a strike bezel on the edge of this light, meaning if you ever needed to, you could use this light in somewhat of a defensive situation. As I said earlier, this is uh, all aluminum construction, uh, aerospace grade aluminum, probably 6061, which is what a lot of these lights are made of. The machining is really clean on everything. The anodized is super tough. Um, I'm not noticing any of the small scratches or anything like that you see on some of the less expensive anodized finishes. So this is definitely a high quality uh, anodized finish on this particular light. And then the rubberized buttons just feel really good. You can tell that um, they're nice and thick. They got texture on them. So if you're wearing gloves or something like that, they're not going to be super slippery. They're easy to find. And then in this front button here, there are some indicator lights that will illuminate when you're charging the light and stuff like that. So all really cool. So as far as build quality goes, this light is definitely top notch. Taking a look again at the batteries on this particular light, 
As we said earlier, the light comes with two 2150 cells that are 5,000 milliamp hours each, making the light a total of 10,000 milliamp hours. The light will charge in two hours and 45 minutes from complete dead with the included cable and power brick, which is pretty good for a light of this size. The light does have a spring on the bottom side of the tail cap, as well as in the head of the flashlight. You can tell by pushing down on the batteries when the tail cap's open, you can see it's resting on a spring in there. Putting the light back together, now on the opposite side of the mode button, you'll find the flap that covers up the charging port. Open it up and you can see it uses a USB-C type power cable. Again, it's provided in the box, but if you had another USB-C cable, you could use that as well. Now when the light is plugged in, you do need to press on the tail cap to activate the charging. And you'll know that the light is charging because the round button here will illuminate indicating that it has power. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the fun stuff, which is how this light actually works, how bright it is, and the run times. To turn the light on, we just use the tail cap on the end, and it, it will activate the LED in there, which is a G9 LED, which is capable of putting out 1,500 lumens. The deep reflector here will throw the light out up to 1,500 meters, or 1,640 yards. This is just short of a mile, so really remarkable. Again, this is a throwing light, not a floodlight. Um, which means it's really meant to reach out and touch things a long ways away. Turn the light on, you just press the tail cap and it turns on. Press it again to turn it off. For a momentary on, you just press the tail cap halfway on. And then when you release, the light will turn off. With the light on from the tail cap, you just go to the button on the side of the head. And this is how you cycle through the modes. So the first setting is going to be the low mode, which is 18 lumens. And it will run for 105 hours, which is a ridiculously long time. The second mode is medium mode, which is 150 lumens and will run for 25 hours. So over a full day in 150 lumens mode, which is really good for a lot of things. That's probably going to be enough. The third mode is 500 lumens and that will run for seven hours and 15 minutes. So basically for an entire shift, if you're out using this constantly, you never turn it off. It'll basically last almost an eight hour shift. The final mode is turbo mode, which is 1500 lumens and will last for three hours and 15 minutes, which is excellent. Something else I wanna point out about this light, unlike a lot of your smaller lights that put out 1500 lumens or maybe even a little bit more, since they're so small, they can't dissipate the heat across the larger head and the frame of the light itself, meaning they overheat and they have to step down power relatively quickly. A larger light like this is gonna be able to do sustained 1,500 lumens running for long periods of time. I haven't personally tested it, but I would expect this light to be able to run near that peak 1,500 lumens you know, intensity for close to that three hours and 50 minutes, especially in colder weather. Um, you have enough surface area and stuff here to dissipate the heat that I don't think the heat is gonna be a limiting factor on the design like this compared to some of your smaller options. Okay, so those were all your standard modes and runtime. Let's go ahead and take a look at the special modes. So turning the light on, you are in turbo mode currently. In seizure warning, when you press and hold the side button, it will go into the first special mode, which is strobe mode. The camera's gonna have a little trouble picking this up because of rolling shutter, but you can see it's quite quick and disorienting. If you press and hold again on the side button, you'll go into beacon mode, which is just a quick blink every five or six seconds or so. Um, beacon mode conserves the battery for quite a long time is the full 1,500 lumens and helps you be seen from a long ways away. Now pressing and holding the side button again, we go into the SOS mode, which is three short blinks followed by three longer blinks. Again, this will conserve the battery life a little bit and indicate to other people that you might need some help. The SOS mode is the full 1,500 lumens of the flashlight's output. To get out of the special mode, just quickly press the side button and you'll come back to the regular use mode for the flashlight. Now let's talk a little bit more about the wireless switch that was included with this light that we talked about briefly earlier. As we said earlier, it comes with two Picatinny rail mounts to mount to your rifle, or you can use the Velcro loops along with the Velcro pad with the adhesive back to mount it to other surfaces. You can also use the remote just like a normal remote, kind of like you would for your garage door opener or something like that. On the back of the wireless switch, you have some Velcro, so you can attach to the Velcro pad without the wireless straps. As far as the wireless remote itself, I looked in the user's manual because I was kind of interested how long will a little remote like this last. And uh, according to the user's manual, it will last up to around 4,000 clicks on the remote and or about 12 months of use. The range of the remote in the user's manual is one meter. However, I was able to get the light to operate with the remote at distances a little bit over one meter. When you've been using the remote with this light, 
and you turn the light off, this remote will stay active for up to two hours before the remote itself shuts down. So if you're out and about and uh, you're using this light and then you come back an hour later, this remote will still work with the light without any problem. So to illustrate how the remote works, I have the light turned on into low mode. And there's two buttons on here. You have button A on the front here, which is kind of a smaller button, which looks like the button on the side of the light. And then you have button B, which is this big flat button here on the back. So for button A, you press it once and the light will go into a higher mode. In this case it is in medium mode or 150 lumens. Then you have high mode and then turbo mode. You press it again, you get back into low mode. Now let's say you have this mounted to your vehicle or the end of your rifle or something like that. And you see something you need to get light on it real quick. This longer flat button, you just press and hold and it goes immediately into turbo mode. You let go and it goes back into the mode you had previously set. Now let's say you uh, want to use this as a strobe or, or something like that. Um, just like on the light, the side button, when you press and hold, will go into the various special modes. So here we have strobe mode engaged. Now when we press it again, it will go into beacon mode, which is just the quick blinks. And then press again, it will go into the SOS mode. To get back into the normal flashlight mode, just press and hold the A button, and it puts you back into normal function. And then pressing will cycle through the different brightnesses of the light. So that's how the wireless switch works. I think it works pretty good. Okay, so that was the overall review of the functions and capabilities of this light. Let's take it outside so you can see the color of the beam and just how powerful this throwing light is. Hey guys, welcome back to the testing area, AKA my backyard. And uh, today we are about 50 feet away from the wall. We're a little further away because we have a throwing light. So let's go ahead and turn this light on and see what it's capable of. So right now we have it on low and that's the eight lumens. And it's easily reaching to the back wall, but the camera might be having a little bit of trouble picking it up. So let's go ahead and bump it up to the medium mode, which is 150 lumens. And in person, I can easily see that the beam is probably around four to five feet in diameter from 50 feet away. Um, it's definitely a tighter beam than some of the floodier lights I've tried previously. Going into the high mode, we now have 500 lumens. And as you can see, this is much, much brighter. But again, the beam is still relatively tight at about five feet in diameter at 50 lumens away. Um, you can clearly see the pots out here where I was growing my tomatoes this summer. But um, again, it's not a real floody light. It's not filling the whole backyard like some of the other lights we've tested. Moving up to the turbo mode, this is the 1,500 lumens mode. And um, definitely very bright. It's uh, supposed to be visible up to almost a mile. But again, because of that, you have a really tight beam and uh, it's gonna be great for search and rescue, security guards, stuff like that. But if you want something that really just um, lights up your entire backyard, something like that, you might need a different light. This is a really good light for reaching out and touching something. So those are the four modes. Let's go ahead and try the special modes. So seizure warning, the first special mode is strobe. And then if you continue to hold the special mode down, you'll be in beacon mode where it just gives a quick chirp or a quick uh, blink every uh, five or six seconds or so. And if you press and hold again, we go into SOS mode, which is, uh, <clears throat> which is three short blinks followed by three longer blinks. And then just press the side button to get out of special mode and you come right back into the last mode you're in. In this case, it's turbo mode. So that's it for the outside testing. Let's head back in. Oops. Okay guys, so there is the overall review with the outdoor testing of this light. And um, what's kind of my final takeaway? I think this is a fantastic light. It charges up relatively quickly, has 10,000 milliamp hours of battery storage. It's super bright. It's definitely um, an accurate assessment when they say 1,500 lumens. And I think for this intended audience, which is gonna be a hunter or a search and rescue type person, or maybe a security guard that works at a large plant or facility, this is gonna be a perfect light for you. And if you want to mount this light to something like your vehicle or something like that, having this uh, wireless pressure switch is gonna be fantastic for you. So this light is a very powerful light with the addition of the wireless switch. I think it's really gonna be a great partner for, again, anyone who's outside a lot and really needs to reach out and touch things when um, they need to go investigate. Again, search and rescue, uh, security officer, I'm, and when I say that, I mean like a big uh, lumber mill or something like that, something where you gotta cover a lot of ground. Um, you could probably use this in marine use as well if you're on a ship or something like that and you need to shine down to a dock or add a dock that's a little ways away for a use case such as that as well. So a great overall light. I would highly recommend you pick one up if you're looking for a true hard use light that can throw up to a mile. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this review helpful. Cheers.